Today, I'm going to be ranking the top 10 melees in Fortnite Save the World. All of these rankings are based on standard defense missions like the 164 players, which is where I get most of my experience. I've got a whole playlist showcasing tons of fun loadouts, and plenty of these weapons here have been featured there. Link to plenty of those videos down below as we go on. And I also want to say that these are my opinions. Many people can make many top 10 lists and get a lot of different answers. Even myself, I had to make some tough choices because not every melee compares that well. Tons of melees do lots of different things, and I even had to put a couple of them in the same position. I want my top 10 list to be strict, like one at a time for this, but I, I just couldn't do that for a couple of these because they're just too similar. And I also want to say that I use a lot of references for this. So I will link a couple of spreadsheets and a Reddit post down below to show you guys where I get a lot of my data. I also did a lot of math on my own. And of course, I've got my own experience. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty fun list. Do not use this as a strict guide. Just because a weapon is ranked higher or lower than another does not mean that it's strictly better or worse. In fact, plenty of the weapons shown on this list and plenty of the melees in the game are all very strong strong even if they're not shown here today and depending on the certain loadout and situation some are going to be better than others just use what you enjoy but this list is a good reference so don't take it too seriously but enjoy regardless so we're going to be starting off with the fishing hook the fishing hook is actually a really decent weapon that i discovered recently so it's not top dps it's why it's in the number 10 slot but there are two key ways to run this you can run this with crit hits cause an explosion with the standard crit hits cause explosion loadout i'm going to link a video down below featuring the storm blade that weapon will definitely come up later but that loadout paired with the fishing hook and then of course scythe perks instead actually works really well for this weapon and you can also run a standard luna build i'm going to link my best ninja loadout video down below if you guys want to craft the perfect ninja loadout because a lot of these weapons require different heroes and that video will give you all the information that you need but luna in the lead plus blast in the past affliction this weapon actually does pretty well it's super strong and it's available during the pirate season so you get two and a half months to pick it up if you play during that if not it's not a big deal because you can just move on to the number nine slot which is even less accessible. This is a founders only weapon. I know people don't like it when I rank these weapons, but I can't ignore that it exists. So if you have it, enjoy. If you don't, maybe a friend could drop it. Otherwise, you can move on to number eight. But the founders Blazing Masamune is amazing. It's actually only in the number eight slot because it's locked to fire. This thing has the damage to be an S tier melee. It has the perk options to be whatever you want. You can't run triple crit damage, but you can run a crit build with uh, with all the attack speed perks you want. It's a, it's a really, really good weapon with a lot of coverage, and it's got a fancy six perks where every six hits it basically doubles your damage output it's awesome it's it's a really fun weapon and it's as good as it sounds however because this is a paid weapon and it's limited availability i'm gonna make that segment short say it's amazing and move on to number eight which is the corsair yeah another pirate weapon this weapon gets by on this list with raw strength now affliction is going to be brought up a lot in this list because affliction does a ton for melees it almost doubles the damage output i'm gonna reference red gs's post down below if you guys want to read all about it and figure out how good affliction is just suffice it to say it's amazing however the corsair is actually lacking it and it's honestly just because of this weapons damage alone and the fact that you can get the crit rating perk on this so it's not the biggest perk in the world but the fact that you can up your crit rating while you're swinging with tons of great perk combinations it's it can be any element it's a super well-rounded weapon that can work in pretty much any configuration any loadout that you want to run and it's going to do a great job next up on our list is the guardian's will this weapon is in the medieval weapon set which means it comes around in the weekly shop randomly yeah we see it like once or twice a year randomly so if you want to research it go for it it's very unlikely that it'll be in the shop on the same day that you do so but it could happen i don't know i'm just saying this weapon's hard to get but when you do pick it up it's amazing so i have it parked here for like a standard luna build like i said affliction does a ton of damage i have a whole video linked down below where it almost soloed a mini boss okay it despawned with like one percent health left i'm still counting it come at me but even though that mini boss escaped me this weapon is still amazingly strong it is super super good and i want to mention loadouts in this video i am running a lot of these weapons and a lot of the math i did based on double attack speed because paleo luna exists i know that she's not available year round and not every single new player has access to her but it's worth mentioning that this list would be meaningless if i didn't account for heroes that exist because when you factor in certain heroes like paleo luna and certain team perks like totally rocking out it makes so many weapons way better than others and way worse than others and it just it wouldn't be a productive ranking if i didn't acknowledge that those things exist so if you want a true top 10 list based on weapon performance alone that could happen but it wouldn't really mean anything because once you start pairing weapons with certain loadouts things change drastically so with double attack speed and affliction this weapon's insanely strong it also has great movement for lunging around and it could be any element which makes it super versatile super good in its own right you can run a crit build with this either way and you're gonna have a great time super super strong weapon highly recommended the next on the list is a weapon that i have been singing the praises of for so long 
Kong, and now I get to talk about it. The Clax! Yeah! This is a derpy weapon that I ignored for years. It's a base game weapon that's available all the time. You can pick it up from llamas and regular missions almost every day, and it hits like a truck. Now, the raw DPS of this weapon is not the highest on the list. In fact, it's actually lower than some of the weapons previously mentioned, but Affliction carries this thing. It Oh, it does so much damage over time. When you start laying into a smasher or even a crowd of enemies, it does enough damage to one-shot most basic enemies. And if you are healing yourself with Arlene Iza, I'll show the loadout, it is super, super good. It's just amazing versatility. It can be any element, and there are a couple of different ways to run it. I like to run attack speed crit damage with Whiteout Fiona in the lead, or you can run Paley Luna in the lead. She'll also do a ton. You can put Whiteout Fiona in support. You can also run double attack speed with Paley Luna in the lead. My point is not to overwhelm you. It's to say that this weapon can do pretty much whatever you want. It is going to be super strong regardless, and I really, really enjoy using it. It's also very well paired with Dennis Jr. You might have noticed he's in the loadout because this is an axe. It's one of the only amazing axes in the game. Not the only. Don't yell at me. I'm just saying it's it's the best axe in the game, and I feel like pairing it with Dennis Jr. is perfect because he gives you that axe illuminations, cause totally rocking out, and activating totally rocking out more often is something we always want. In fact, because you have totally rocking out active so often, you can still run Paley Luna in the lead and a crit damage perk. Totally rocking out plus the base 20% crit chance will mean you're critting plenty often and it's going to do a ton of damage in the process with the affliction stacking on top and everything around you is going to die and it's going to be a wonderful time. I highly recommend you try out the clacks, make three copies of it for every element, you won't regret it. Now the next three weapons in this slot are all kind of a tie break and they are the vacuum tube weapons. I wanted to mention the vacuum tube sword, the vacuum tube axe, and the vacuum tube spear all kind of at the same time because they all kind of work the same. If you're curious, the vacuum tube sword is the best out of all of them so that's that's the one I'm going to be talking about, but the vacuum tube spear and the axe are both very good. In fact, I mentioned the clacks previously. If you pair the vacuum tube axe with Dennis Jr. and a totally rocking out build, you're going to be having a wonderful time. It's going to be awesome, but we're going to be focusing on the sword because it is the best of the best. It is amazing. Paley Luna, double attack speed. It will do amazing stuff. Its damage isn't that incredible on its own, but the chain lightning is where it shines. Now, this is locked to energy, so it's a little weird to place a weapon this high, but when you are in a water zone and you are using this weapon with a correct build, you're going to love it. If you have healing death burst, it will hold this weapon back, but without it, you are going to be hitting so many enemies at the same time. You're going to be attacking up to seven targets at the same time because you're going to be killing the target in front of you, chain lightning to six other targets, and it is so strong. In fact, you can go into an encampment and ignore the mist monsters and basically just target all of the baby zombies. You're going to be healing off of Arlene Iza, staying alive, activating Totally Rockin' Out, or keeping Blast in the Past alive with coconuts, whatever your build is. You're going to be eliminating everything, and it's going to be a wonderful time. If you have not used chain Lightning vacuum tube sword. I highly recommend it. It is super, super strong and not to be understated. Now, this is where the list gets a little competitive. We have a couple of weapons here because, again, they function the same. We're going to be talking about the Stabs Worth a Third and the Slice and Dice. I'm going to be kind of gliding right past the Slice and Dice because it is a slightly slower swinging. Look at this. It is 0.29 compared to 0.28. Now, I know this is Bright Horror versus Sunbeam, but like, come on. The Slice and Dice is like a slightly slower swinging Stabs Worth that does slightly less damage. It's functionally the same exact weapon with one caveat. It has the landing five hits in a row on a single target, does a small amount of extra damage. That perk did not really save it. I did some testing with this. It didn't impress, but regardless, we're going to be focusing on the stabs worth because it is kind of the, the base game king of Paleo Luna. It swings super fast, not with this build, but with a more, there we go, double attack speed build. Affliction does its job like usual. It can be any element, and the damage for this weapon is actually pretty good. So you're not just farming Luna with this weapon. You're actually doing meaningful damage. Now, as a nice little honorable mention, if you are one of those people with a nice fancy Founder's Night Cleave, uh, it's glitched from a long time ago. This is no longer obtainable, but it was possible to get quadruple attack speed. If you have this, it is fantastic for farming Paleo Luna. Today, I am just talking about the base game currently accessible Stabs Worth III, which is, again, amazing. It's a really, really good base game weapon. Tons of damage. Swings fast. Does the job. Highly recommend it. Not a complicated weapon, so we're just going to move straight on to the Stormblade. So, this is the best of the best when it comes to crit hits cause an explosion. I've been alluding to this perk before, but this is the weapon that does it best. This is a weapon that can be affliction, but honestly, 
Crit hits cause explosion is what you want. I referenced that video earlier where this is being paired with Whiteout Fiona. It is super, super good at exploding a lot, killing lots of baby enemies. It's single target damage suffers, but I still wanted to put it up here because it does a ton of damage when Totally Rockin' Out is active, and that is not to be ignored. It is super, super fun, and because it's locked to energy, it's kind of easy to supercharge. You don't need a lot of copies of this. You don't need three for all the elements. It is nerfed in damage because it's energy versus elemental targets. You're only going to be doing 75%, but you're not really going to notice that versus normal targets. It's, again versus mini bosses you'll suffer but supercharging the single copy makes it nice and easy so you can get that damage bonus if you want and you're gonna have a great time this weapon with the right build is super super fun i have called this my favorite melee loadout in fortnite save the world and i mean it it might not be the absolute strongest but i very much enjoy it and it's a super super fun weapon now we are getting to the top two i am going to surprise nobody here today but the ravager is the best melee in the game why it's crazy i know it's it's insane but down here a weapon that i have not supercharged for some reason that needs to be fixed this spectral blade you can see i've got this perked in several different ways you've got triple attack speed water or energy and you've got triple crit damage you can also do attack speed i believe crit rating double crit damage which makes it just a great damaging weapon if you just want to use this weapon because it's strong put like assassin sarah in the lead or a totally rocking out build and you could just use this weapon on its own merits you can totally do that you can also run it triple attack speed and farm the hell out of Luna. This is potentially the best Paleo Luna weapon available in the game. Now, I said that old glitched Founder's Night Cleave is better, but uh, assuming you don't have that, which most of us don't, this is basically your best option. Now, the Ravager can be triple attack speed too. However, it is locked to energy or physical. The fact that you can have a water spectral blade means that in fire missions, it actually out damages the Ravager. That is ignoring the special six perk on the Ravager with that wave of damage. That does put the Ravager back into the lead, but the uh, spectral Blade has some pretty good six perks as well. Not as good as Affliction, but you can get some extra damage. You can get some extra crit rating. If you're running that totally rocking out build with triple crit damage, I actually recommend the crit rating six perk. It will help a little bit, but for general use cases or at least triple attack speed with Luna, you do want damage. The difference between these two is pretty negligible, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. And of course, I do want to mention the crit damage perk on here is not an accident. We are assuming you're using Whiteout Fiona in support. So there are a lot of ways to run this weapon. And again, I'm not trying to overwhelm you. I do have specific videos on the Spectral Blade and and ninja loadouts both of those references will get you set up with the best build that you can have but what i'm saying is the versatility of this weapon is not to be understated it is like the poor man's ravager if you haven't beat the storm king and you're a lower level player that's completely fine we've all been there the spectral blade will absolutely do great in fact i pulled it out in a mission recently and it impressed me so much that i wondered why i didn't use it more often so if you're running a fire mission absolutely pull out the spectral blade even if you're not use an energy you're gonna love it triple attack speed is great with luna triple crit damage is great if you're crazy crit rating double crit damage attack speed is amazing if you're just trying to use this weapon for its own strengths and not just farm luna it's a great weapon with lots of options and i didn't even mention the lunge in fact as i'm recording this that lunge has been broken for a long time sometimes it just doesn't do damage but i know how it worked when it worked flawlessly that lunge can close the gap so nicely it can do a ton of damage in the process it even has a nice arc that actually clears a crowd of enemies and it's really really good it, it gives you a lot of versatility for a melee weapon where you can close that distance but the ravager has that too it has two heavy attacks if you jump and dash you can do the same thing as the spectral blade if you use the heavy attack while you're on the ground it'll set out a wave of damage that does so much damage that it's actually worth using during continuous damage if you are laying into a mini boss which you should be using the ravager for you can back up a step use that wave of damage and it's worthwhile doing if you can pull it off quickly there are so many different ways to run the ravager that i've perked up two copies and i keep several on me these are all different look i've got triple crit damage attack speed because sometimes i like to be crazy i've got double crit damage crit rating attack speed to run it normally. I've got a physical copy in case I'm using Paleo Luna against a mini boss. In fact, sometimes I just run triple attack speed weapons just to use Paleo Luna and then we go up a mini boss and I'm glad that I have this. In fact, I even have a fourth copy, which is crit rating double crit damage attack speed again, but it's physical because smoke screen mini bosses can't have an element. So this makes this weapon that you're seeing right here while supercharged and Sunbeam is intentional. This is the best weapon in the game versus a smoke screen mini boss. It's something I keep for any build that I'm using. You can see the durability is quite low because I actually use it quite often. If you're running a shotgun build or a ranged weapon build or a constructor, this is still the weapon you want to use because smokescreen reduces your ranged weapon damage by 75%. So this is what you want to use or an ability. If you want to use like a minigun or lefty and righty, you're going to do fine. Rosie's also not that bad because uh, it'll cut through that smokescreen just fine. I'm just saying the Ravager... 
the Ravager. It is the best melee in the game. However, like I said, don't forget about elemental disadvantages because lo being locked to energy or physical does mean that it is rather weak versus fire enemies, for example, where you might want to use the Spectro Blade. And if you're going up against water enemies, honestly, that vacuum tube sword is going to come out to play. So it's an amazing weapon, but don't forget that there are other options because uh, it's easy to do so when you only use the Ravager. That was the top 10 melees in Fortnite Save the World. If you agreed or disagreed, leave a comment down below. Like I said, I did a ton of research for this video and I've been using tons of these melees for years and I'm really confident in this list. Some of these were very subjective. I mean, they can go up and down based on my mood, but I'm pretty confident with this list. And if you're a new player watching this, it'll give you some good advice. So if you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like or subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, have a good rest of your day. <laughs> Do 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 do